Howdy, I'm Baron Stone from San Antonio, Texas. This week we learned about acceleration and friction, which we'll use when implementing our spaceship program. So I want to explain the relationship between acceleration, velocity, and position so you can understand how they affect each other and why we model them in Python the way that we do. I also want to explain the force of friction so you can understand how it affects an object's motion. Let's start by reviewing velocity. Velocity represents the rate of change in an object's position over a specific amount of time. For example, if an object has a velocity of 1, then its position will increase by 1 for every unit of time that passes. In our Python programs, we typically implement that change of position in the draw handler. So our unit of time is 1 60th of a second, since the draw handler is called 60 times per second. Every time that draw handler is called, we use this code to change the position of our object by its velocity. To illustrate how velocity changes an object's position over time, let's consider this red ball, which begins at position 0. If we give it a constant velocity of 2, we can see that for every unit of time that passes, its position will be incremented by 2. Understanding this relationship makes understanding acceleration easier because acceleration has the exact same relationship to velocity that velocity has to position. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity for a unit of time. Again, since we update the velocity in our draw handler, the unit of time is 1 60th of a second, and in our programs we use code similar to what we saw with the position and velocity. So, if we apply a constant acceleration of 1 to our red ball, its velocity will steadily increase by 1 for each unit of time that passes, which in turn means its position will change by more and more for each unit of time that passes. Acceleration is the result of a force acting on an object. So in our spaceship program, the spaceship's thrusters are exerting a force on the spaceship, and we calculate the resulting acceleration vector. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail on the spaceship because I don't want to give away any project answers for this week. So instead, there's another force that I want to focus on in this video. And it's a force that's acting on you right now as you sit there watching it. And no, I'm not talking about the persuasive force that convinces you to upvote this video. I'm talking about the force of gravity. And so to demonstrate that, I'm going to go outside, even though it got really cold this week. There's a story that says Sir Isaac Newton discovered gravity when an apple fell out of a tree and bonked him on the head. Ouch. Earth is exerting a constant gravitational force on you, me, everything. And that force is pulling us towards the Earth and conveniently keeps us from floating away. When gravity exerts its force on an object in free fall, it'll cause that object to accelerate towards the Earth at a constant rate. And because it's accelerating at a constant rate, its velocity will increase over time. So when I hold this apple, at the moment when I initially let go of it, its velocity will be zero. And then its velocity will increase until it hits the ground. So let's look at some code to simulate that. In this program, I've recreated that inspiring moment in the history of physics when Sir Isaac Newton got bonked on the head by an apple. Now before I go into the code, let me go ahead and just run the program. And you can see here, it's just a simple simulation of an apple falling down towards Isaac Newton's head. I have a reset button to set the apple back up. You can see here I have two uh, data fields that are related to this apple. I have an acceleration and a velocity, and both of those are vectors representing the x and y directions. And so if I turn on gravity, since gravity is a constant acceleration in the downward direction, you notice that my gravity vector, the y element, will become a positive number and remain constant, representing a positive constant acceleration. And then the velocity will change over time based on that rate of acceleration. So if I turn on gravity, you can see here I have a gravity value of 0 0.05 in the vertical direction. And my velocity is increasing over time at that rate times 60 times a second. If one other thing I want to show you is that if I toggle gravity on and off very briefly, you notice that I just for a moment there applied that acceleration in the y direction and it was enough to accelerate my apple to a velocity of 0.03 but now that there's no uh, acceleration going on that velocity is just going to remain constant it doesn't revert to zero it just stays where it is but since we do have a positive velocity it's going to cause the apple to continue in a steady motion so let's look at the code behind that you can see here I've defined an apple class and in that apple class I have our init method which allows the user to pass an initial position and velocity uh, and then it takes the gravity, which is used uh, assigned up here in this global gravity variable. 
And then down here I have an update method, and this is where the magic really happens. So I use a for loop to iterate over the x and y dimensions, um, and you can see here that in each of those dimensions, I first update the acceleration, and I do so by taking the uh, value of that gravity variable and just assigning it to our local data field for acceleration. Then I update the velocity, and I do that by taking that value from the local acceleration data field and adding it to the local velocity data field. This means that every time the update method is called, this velocity will increase or decrease by the amount of this acceleration, whether it's positive or negative in here. And then I do the same thing down below for position. I take the value from that velocity data field and I add it to our position data field. And so thing to note here is that I call them, or I perform these actions in the order of acceleration, velocity, position. And if you remember, that's because acceleration changes velocity and velocity changes position over time. And then the last method in my Apple class is just a draw method, which draws the Apple at that point, uh, its position on the canvas. The one other function I want to show you here is my draw function. And you can see that after I draw my nice picture of Sir Isaac Newton, I then call the update method on our Apple object, and then I call the draw method on our Apple object. And uh, the Apple object is created down here. So that's a nifty little program. It's a simple simulation, but unfortunately it runs rather quickly because the Apple just kind of falls off the screen and it's not too exciting. So let's see if we can take these same physics and apply them to a red bouncy ball, which will stay within our canvas. So here's my program for a bouncing red ball, and I'm going to go ahead and just run it. You can see here I have a red ball drawn on a black canvas. And so if I hit my toggle gravity button, you'll see my ball just starts bouncing. And unlike the apple, it doesn't fall off the canvas. Instead, I've programmed this ball that if it hits any of the edges of the canvas, it'll be deflected off that edge with the inverse of its velocity. So basically, this is a rubber ball with perfect elasticity, which is something I really wish I could have had as a kid. So we look up here at the data I'm showing. Uh, you'll notice I have two acceleration vectors, a gravity and a manual acceleration. Uh, gravity is what we saw before. I have a positive constant acceleration in the downward direction for this ball. Uh, and I'll cover what the manual acceleration is in just a second. You notice since I'm accelerating downwards, my velocity is uh, changing at that rate of one unit per 60 times a second. And the velocity is switching between positive and negative depending on if the ball is currently flying up or down. And then the position is changing according to that velocity. So this manual acceleration is a bonus I added to this ball. I gave it the ability to use my left and right keys to manually accelerate the ball left or right. So you can see here, if I push left, I apply a negative 0.2 acceleration to it. And if I push the right key, I apply a positive 0.2 acceleration to it uh, in the x direction. One last thing I want to show you is that if I turn off gravity, this ball will now continue flying, uh, but it does so in a fashion similar to what we saw with our Pong program. Since it's not being accelerated in any direction, its velocity is going to remain constant except when it hits one of the edges, uh, and that position will continue to change at that constant rate. So let's look at the code behind it. It's very similar to what we saw with the apple a second ago. I've created a ball class similar to the apple with an init method, which takes in a bunch of user provided values. Uh, you notice I have two acceleration data fields. One of these is going to be that manual acceleration, which the user applies with the keys. And then this one down here, the just ACC field, is going to be the total acceleration of ball, which will be the sum of the user applied acceleration and my gravity variable. Down under the update method where all the magic happens, you can see again I use a for loop to iterate over my x and y dimensions. Uh, here I update the acceleration by adding the user acceleration field with my gravity vector and apply that to the total acceleration data field in this ball object. Next I update the velocity and I do that by first uh, performing this check to see if the ball is within the frame. If it is, then I just apply acceleration as usual. So I take that acceleration data field and I add it to the velocity uh, data field. Otherwise, I know the ball is hitting the edge. And so then I just invert the velocity by uh, setting velocity equal to its negative. And then last, I update that position by taking the velocity and adding it to the position data field. Very similar to the apple. Uh, the last method, there's one more method in this ball class that wasn't in the apple. And that's an accelerate method 
and that's what I use to manually apply it, the, the user force to accelerate the ball. As you can see down here in my key up and key down handler, I'm calling that ball object uh, in the accelerate method and passing it a positive or negative acceleration in the X or Y direction, depending on if which key I'm pressing. And then last here, my draw function, just like with the Apple, calls ball.update and then ball.draw. In that example code, our little red ball bounced and bounced and bounced, and it would never stop bouncing because there's nothing there to slow it down. Objects in real life don't behave that way. If an object is moving along, it eventually comes to a stop. For example, if I kick this ball, it doesn't just roll on forever, eventually it comes to a stop. And this is due to a force called friction. Friction is a force that the environment exerts on an object to oppose the direction of an object's motion. So for example, when I kicked that ball, its motion was in that direction, which means friction was exerting a force and accelerating it back towards me, slowing it down until its velocity was eventually zero. So let's look at how we can apply friction to our little red bouncing ball. There are a lot of different ways that the environment can exert friction on an object. One way is drag, which is friction that is exerted on an object due to the air surrounding that object. And another form of friction is something I'm going to call dampening, which is friction due to deformation. And so that's going to occur with our little ball. Every time it hits a wall, it's going to deform a little bit and lose some of its energy and thus slow down. So let's give drag a value. We'll give it a relatively small value of 0 0.001, and we'll give dampening a slightly larger value of 0.1. So to implement friction, we go down into our ball class under the update method, and into the section where we update the velocity. And you remember we had two cases. The first case represents when the ball is inside the canvas and thus flying through the air. So this is where we'll implement our friction due to drag. So you can see we already say here that we're taking the acceleration and we're updating our velocity by adding the acceleration. And now we need to update that velocity by subtracting that uh, friction vector. So we'll say self times or self uh, velocity minus equal. And now we need to subtract the friction. And here the friction vector is going to be equivalent to the velocity vector scaled by that drag. So we've taken the velocity vector, scaled it down by drag, and, and subtracting it from the original velocity. And this applies the friction due to air. So down here to apply our friction due to dampening, uh, you can see in this expression we're already taking the velocity and applying it to itself just in a negated form. So here we don't have to create a second expression. We can actually just scale this velocity before we set it to the new velocity by 1 minus that dampened coefficient. What this is doing is dampening expresses the amount of energy that's being lost every time the ball hits. So 1 minus dampen expresses the energy that's retained every time the ball hits. So we're scaling our velocity by the retained energy, so 90% of the retained energy in this case, negating it, and then setting that to be our new velocity uh, since the ball is bounced off a wall. So if we run this program and we turn on gravity, you can't really tell that the ball is being slowed by air because it's relatively small. But you can see that every time it bounces off the ground, it loses about 10% of its momentum. Now that we've implemented acceleration due to gravity and friction on our little red bouncing ball, let's see what happens if we revisit the week four project of Pong and apply those forces on the Pong ball. I call this program Gravity Pong. It's basically the same as the program we wrote in the week four uh, project, with the exception that the ball now experiences acceleration due to gravity and friction due to dampening and deformation. I've also implemented a little feature that if the ball hits the paddle down near the bottom of the screen, it'll be flung upward and that prevents the ball from getting into a stalemate position at the bottom. So I'm not gonna go into the details on the code right now for the sake of time, but I encourage you to check out the code for yourself and play a couple rounds of Gravity Pong. I think it's an interesting take on a uh, classic arcade game. I hope these examples made the concepts of acceleration and friction and how we implement them in Python more clear. Remember that acceleration changes the velocity of an object over time, and velocity in turn changes the position of that object over time. Also remember that friction is a force which opposes an object's motion, so in Python we model our friction vector as the scaled inverse of that object's velocity vector. So with these two concepts in your pocket, you can implement a whole new level of physics in your games. Happy programming!